Hi, I'm Max, and this is KMD Motorsport. All right, in the last episode, you saw the parts I have uh, ready and waiting for the block, um, as well as some of the block prep. Um, but in this episode, you're going to see me really clean the block and get it fully ready to accept all the parts I have, as well as clean up the piston some more and uh, start filing the rings. So uh, let's get into it. So to start with, we need to really clean the block as best I can. I'm gonna do that by just hosing it down. Um, take out the garden hose and shoot water through all the oil passages, all the coolant jackets. Um, just really get the block as clean as possible. You don't want any metal shavings left over anywhere on the block. If your machine shop tells you that they cleaned it as best they could and that you don't need to clean it, don't listen to them, just clean it. Unless there's like a really specific reason that I can't think of to not do it, you should do it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just pulling the hose out, spraying it down, getting all the uh, jackets and passages as clean as possible. I know this is hose water, so there's gonna be some leftover residue and stuff like that, but not to worry, I'm gonna you know spray it down with WD-40 and brake cleaner um, through all the jackets and passages as well um, to try to displace any of that. Yeah. Come back around in a couple months, see how it goes. Okay, that's what's up. Alright, have a good one. Um, so to clean the cylinder walls, you're going to want a strong detergent like ATF, which is what I'm using here, and a clean paper towel. Um, dab the ATF onto the clean paper towel and, you know, wipe that around inside the, uh, the cylinder wall. Um, what I'm doing here is using, you know, one big paper towel, folding it up a few times, um, and then dabbing the ATF on there, rubbing it around, and, you know, starting from bottom and working my way up. The reason 
I'm starting at the bottom and working my way up is because my hand is touching all over the cylinder when I'm starting at the bottom. And I don't want to stop while I've got a bunch of my hand oils all over the cylinder. Uh, so I started at the bottom, worked my way up. On the first pass, you're going to see the, uh, the paper towels just covered in like gray. It's just a gray paper towel. That's good because you're getting all of that crap out of the cylinder wall, out of the hone hatch. You don't want that in there when your rings are trying to seat against the cylinder wall. So basically just repeat that process with a clean part of the paper towel until you get a completely clean and I guess red uh, you know, section of the paper towel. Um, it's important to remember to only look at the part of the paper towel that's actually touching the cylinder wall. At one point I was touching like the bottom of the block and, uh, and pulling it out and seeing it was still dirty not realizing I was looking at what touched the bottom of the block. Um, so I was kind of chasing something that I'd never find. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. All right, so now that the block is all cleaned up, um, let's start cleaning out the, uh, the ring lands of the, the pistons. Uh, so it was advised by Tony from Godwin Singer, uh, the machine shop I've been using, to break one of the old rings I had and go through the ring lands of each piston and scrape out whatever gunk was left over in there. This is important to do to make sure that your rings sit well inside the ring lands. He said that the water jet machine dishwasher thing for the pistons um, got a lot of the stuff off of the pistons and loosened up whatever you know carbon buildup was in the ring lands, but it's not quite strong enough to really get all that stuff out of there. So it takes some uh, some extra encouragement from a from a broken ring to really scrape in there and uh, get all that stuff out of there. And again, don't worry about all the particulate stuff that might be getting into the oil drain holes and stuff like that, because these also are gonna get a nice hefty dose of brake clean and WD-40. All right, so that was me uh, doing the first round of scraping on the uh, pistons. So now I'm just gonna do one more round of them, uh, try to get them just as clean as possible in the ring lands. Uh, so you get to see that in some higher quality now. So let's get to it. Uh, I noticed that the inside of the piston ring had some carbon buildup on it. Uh, which is what I had been using to scrape previously. I was using the inside like that. Uh, so now for this last pass, I'm gonna use the outside since uh, it's nice and clean on the outside. So take it, put it a little forward, get that in there, and then I roll it back. I think this ring is the one I didn't want to use, so let me try this one. Yeah, that's a lot better. Uh, it should pass through the ring land pretty easily. Not on your, maybe your first pass, but it shouldn't get, feel like it's, you know, not wanting to move through. If it feels like that, it's probably because it got bent when you broke it. So try to get one that's just as straight as possible and, uh, and use that instead. So it looks like this one is pretty clean. I don't see any stuff falling off. So I think I'm done with that. I'm gonna go to the oil scraper, do one more pass of that. Get some stuff off of there. All right, that one looks pretty clean. Gonna go to the next. The uh, oil ringland. Scrape down in there. Turn it around. Go the other way. You definitely want your oil ring area to be super clean because, as most of you may know, the M54 likes to burn oil and. Uh, 
a lot of that is due to just general piston ring design, but uh, part of it is just that like oil doesn't drain very well from the piston. So, you know, you, you want it to be able to flow as nice and easily as possible through your, through your oil ring. So get that nice and clean. I'm pretty happy with that one. It doesn't, you know, looking down into it, it's a bit shiny. You know, mo it's mostly shiny aluminum. Um, there are some kind of darker, dirtier spots, but you know, there's there's only so much you can do with a broken piston ring. Uh, so, you know, maybe you go a little bit more right there around the drain holes. Again, there's only so much you can do with a broken piston ring. So, using a piston ring to do the cleaning was recommended to me by Tony, the guy at the machine shop. I don't know if you can use, uh, you know, a dental pick or something like that. You probably could. I'm just doing it the way that he said to. And I mean, why not, right? Like that's like the perfect, you know, slot. I guess with a dental pick, you might be able to get into the finer areas, but I'm not sure if you risk gouging the, the aluminum or something like that. So do your own research, figure it out, ask your own machine shop. Maybe they'll tell you that's, you know, even better. So, all right, we're gonna move on. So this piston um, might look a little cleaner than the others to you. Uh, that's because I actually took the rod and wrist pin out of this piston and sprayed it down with WD-40. Um, I did that a little bit on camera, but mostly off camera because uh, it was seized, right? All of these other ones uh, rotate pretty pretty freely. Uh, this one was not rotating. It was like really hard to, to rotate. Um, and that got me a little worried. So I just took the, the retaining clip out, knocked the wrist pin out and uh, everything looked good. I just sprayed it down with some WD-40, put it back together. Um, so now it rotates nice and smooth. You'll see the full process of all that done to all these pistons. I'm definitely not gonna leave just WD-40 in there. Um, I'm gonna you know, put engine lube in all the wrist pins and all that stuff before putting it in. I just wanted to make sure that nothing was funky with this piston, so yeah. Now, uh, word of precaution, don't drop your pistons when you're uh, taking them out of the block. I dropped this one um, and it's fine, but you know, I don't think you can see that from here, but no, I don't think you can. I, mean, I see a mark, I see it. Yeah, so there's a mark there. And then let's see, is there another one I can show you? There's a little, little tiny little something there that you might be able to see. Not a huge deal at all. It's just nice to put in, you know, perfect parts. Uh, I think that that marks the point of being able to file our rings, so. I'm gonna go get the block, put it up here, go get the rings and start getting that all sorted. Um, I have a bad feeling about the rings, so we might not be able to file them today. Uh, when I was looking at them the other day, they felt a little thicker than what they should be. And on the box it said M57 diesel. Um, and just based off of my own intuition, I would think diesel rings would be a bit thicker than petrol rings. So let me go grab those. We'll size them up. And if they're good, then I'll get the, uh, the block out too. So I'll be right back. <sighs> Peeler gauge, uh, don't necessarily need that yet. Ring spreader, filer. Hopefully we'll need this too. Rings. All right. So, uh, oil, scraper, compression. That's hefty. All right. That didn't work out the way I hoped it would. 
That is way too thick. That is ginormous. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Um, I'm not sure why they sent me M57 and it's not like they accidentally put one M57 in there. They are all M57, 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 M57. Um, so that is really unfortunate. So we will have to get back to you at a later time. Well, it was through Rock Auto. So yeah, I've never had a bad time with Rock Auto personally. They always send me exactly what I order. Uh, so this is a first. Um, let me actually see what the order says. Um, it does, it does say 2005 BMW 330CI 3 liter inline 6. So I think whoever was working the line that day or working the, the floor that day just kind of grabbed the wrong thing six times. So yeah, that's unfortunate, but hopefully they're cool about it. Um, yeah, so we will get back to you.